So in Carcassi number seven, uh, of course, we are in the key of A minor. What's interesting about the intro is that at the second fret, third string, we hold the note A. And what we have is we have notes revolving around that A. So we have this triplet kind of. And then we have a little A minor thing running around that in the bass notes. So as we keep this steady. that really interesting bass line going over. So as long as you keep uh, the triplet steady here. You'll start to hear the double guitar effect, which is pretty cool. Um, and he's really just kind of going through, um, you know, some basic chords here. So we have the intro. Now, fingering is also very important. You notice how I planted my middle finger on the third string and let everything revolve around that. Into a D minor. And you see the bass notes are gonna change. B minor seven. So we have Nice. Then uh, this little move, kind of like the intro, except we have another one of those moving bass lines across the top here on the D string. Very interesting. Then it goes to an A minor. Over E. And then we go back into the melody again, which is really cool. Alternate picking everything. And then this next section. Back to the intro. You can hear that kind of Italian feel right there. Which is a lot of the keys that he actually played it. You know, wrote his tunes in uh, A minor, D minor, E seven. You know that kind of that kind of feel. So yeah, there's the ending in A minor. Now the second part of the song here is really interesting because he kind of keeps up with the same type of theme. However, this time with a major chord, and uh, it starts in the C. You know, with a C major. So that. So now the revolving note is just a C. Cool. So instead of now we're at what's so interesting about this is all the string skipping going on. I think that's the the biggest challenge of this piece is really the string skipping because it just has such a nice sound that it's fun to play. Uh, but you'll find that the main challenge is getting through. And a lot of interesting bass movement here. That's really, really brilliant how you wrote that. You know, you can hear the melody going this way. And the bass line. Let's put that together. And uh, this next part here, just keeping up with the same theme, melodically. Yeah. 
and that's really nice. So we have... And this is uh, one of my favorite parts here. This almost sounds like a symphony of violins or something. Um, I don't know what he was thinking when he wrote this, but it definitely, to me, has the effect of probably, you know, five or six violins going at it at one time here. Very melodic. It goes like this. Right there, at that point, you can see that there's, a, you know, some tension beginning to start. tension almost like I said the violins are playing in unison and and uh, harmony and creating um, you know almost battling each other uh, here at a little faster speed you'll hear it and we're back to the A minor thing again so it's definitely worth spending some time here and faster and now to the E major there's a little run here on the bottom string the, the high E anyways kind of neat there and you can kind of We are alternate picking everything, but you could, you know, later on, you could sneak your middle finger in there and hybrid pick that. But picking it is um, definitely where the workout is. So as we're walking down this scale, we have this E. Doing, uh, taking that part and actually moving it around and improvising with it. You know, maybe something like Bach, Toccata, and Fugue, and throw it in there. They improvise around with it once you get that open string moving. to the intro. So it's, I, again, I think that's really clever how he kind of just walked down the scale um, with the open string. And brought you right back to the intro again. To end out the piece, we're going here for the uh, G minor, A7, and another one of those violin-esque parts again. faster on that part. Now 
Kirkasi wrote that originally with just an A on the end. But it's nice to maybe throw an A minor there or here. You know, after all that. Like, or maybe throw one of those kind of endings on it. Whatever you want, whatever you feel uh, sounds best to you is okay. You know, you can do anything you want there. But definitely learn this piece. This is a really, really fun one. And with all the string skipping and all the things going on, it's such a musical piece that uh, you'll be sure to, um, you know, impress all your neighbors and family members with this piece. So enjoy. <laughs> 